It's good to be back in the house of God, as God is so good and so precious. Hallelujah. Amen. Did y'all have a good week thus far? Ooh, it's been hot out there. Feels like we're in the middle of the desert somewhere. Amen. But hallelujah. Today, Pastor Christine and I got out and the kids, and we just said, oh, it feels so good the sun, because we were in the freezing room. And all of a sudden, I said, oh, it's hot now. <laughs> Let's get inside. <laughs> Amen. Well, hallelujah. You know, I love it when the Lord, uh, through Pastor Christine, said, the anointing is increasing in every service. How many people know that? Let's say the anointing is increasing in every service. The anointing is increasing in every service. Say it again. The anointing is increasing in every service. The anointing is increasing in every service. You just made the devil mad. Ha, 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 ha. ha. Amen. The anointing is increasing. Does it matter? Does it matter what the devil tries? The anointing is increasing. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I want to encourage uh, people that, that make it so, it's so easy for, for them to miss out on what God is going to do. Amen. Simply because it's a temporary setback in something. Maybe they're tired. Maybe their job. Maybe they're sick. Whatever's going through. But it doesn't matter. The anointing is still increasing. Hallelujah. Amen. It's going to increase till Jesus comes. Either we're in or we out. And I want to be in. I want to be in the middle of everything God is doing. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, I used to go to a church in Humble, Texas uh, called the King's Church. We, we served there many years. Beautiful church. And my pastor had a banner. It was Zechariah 4, 6. How many people know what Zechariah 4, 6 says? Hallelujah. Well, let's go. Let's turn there. Hallelujah. Amen. Go to Zechariah. Hallelujah. Zechariah 5, 6. And you know, it was one of the things that you would always see when you walk into the house of God. And uh, it was always proclaimed. And uh, we need to remember what the word of the Lord says in Zechariah, the fourth chapter, verse six. Hi, kids. How you guys doing? Haven't seen you all day. <laughs> Amen. In Zechariah, the fourth chapter, verses six, the Bible says, Then he answered, and spake unto me, saying, Thus is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, let's go ahead and read it all together, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. The, the armies of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's not by might or not by power, but by the spirit of the Lord. So in other words, everything that we do, it's by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Amen. It's by the Spirit of the living God that, that we accomplish things. Hallelujah. Amen. So, so this states, this scripture states that it's the power of the Holy Ghost that will produce things in your life. It's the power of the anointing of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so if the anointing is increasing in every service, then we have to recognize that the anointing is going to produce some things. Hallelujah. Amen. And so the anointing is an empowerment from God. It is an empowerment from God through the Holy Spirit, which causes the believer to become fruitful. I said fruitful, amen. fat, amen, powerful, a conqueror, successful, yes. spiritual, blessed to accomplish God's purpose Hallelujah. and plan for their life. Amen. See, we need the anointing. Hallelujah. Amen. And also, it also increases other gifts that we learn to develop and we learn to use. And every time I would go into that church, our home church, I would see that banner. And I was always reading that banner. It is not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Amen. So in other words, we cannot fulfill God's purpose or plan without the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We can't. It takes the anointing. I, every time I get up here, I say, Lord, I need the anointing up here. Um, we need the anointing every time we come to church. We need the anointing, especially in these days that we live, right? Oh, my goodness, we need the anointing. Hallelujah, amen. And so it's going to take the anointing to transform our lives from natural circumstances to the supernatural, from weak to strong, and from fearful to faith-filled, right? It takes the anointing. Sometimes, um, you know, I get tired and I have to say, Lord... I don't confess I'm tired, but I confess I'm strong in the Lord. When I am weak, I am, when I am weak, I become strong in you. 
Hallelujah. Amen. And also when, when discouragement tries to hit and whatever you're feeling uh, happens, you just have to bombard it with the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So the anointing makes a difference. Say with me, amen. The anointing makes a difference. So what is the anointing? Really, what is the anointing? Well, the anointing is more, is more than we, we, we try to understand. The anointing is an ability. It's an ability. Uh, education gives you an ability in the natural world. Um, you know, money gives you the ability in the realm of, finance, of, of the economic part of the world, right? And so a strength in your body gives you the ability to do things, right? But the anointing is, gives you the ability to do something with ease and ability to achieve something under the power of God. In other words, you and I could not come to church unless it was by the anointing of God. And, and so, so we have to realize it takes the anointing to get us out of the house of God. And, and sometimes, uh, you know, you want to just stay at home. And, and I, know, I know that feeling, but it takes the anointing at that very moment to, to rise up and say, uh-uh, I it's not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord for me to rise up to do the ability of God in my life. Hallelujah. It takes the anointing. Hallelujah. Amen. These years of, of, of pastoring the church, it, it takes the anointing of God. Oh, no, gosh, in the natural, there's many things in the natural you, 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 you wonder you have to cast down, but you, it takes the anointing. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, especially moments when nobody comes to church and it's just you and the cameraman. It takes the anointing, hallelujah, amen. It takes the anointing to just, to just be cheerful, hallelujah, amen. So we have to recognize that, amen. So let's declare something together before we go into the sermon, amen. Say with me loud and strong, something great is about to happen to me. Something great is about to happen to me. This year, this year. and it starts tonight. And it starts tonight. It's because of the anointing. It's because of the anointing. So something great is about to happen to us. Every service, the anointing is increasing. That's what the pastor, that's what Pastor Christine said under the anointing. Every service, the anointing will increase. I will stand on that. The anointing is increasing in every service. The anointing is increasing in every service. The anointing is increasing in every service. Devil, I want you to hear this. The anointing is increasing in every service. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Amen. We have to say it and declare it. Hallelujah. Amen. Now notice this, we continue praying for people, continue praying for, for members, continue praying for, for those that are sick. Like right now, we, we're praying and agreeing for, for, for faith to fill people that are battling things. Today we got a text from a, a friend of mine that I, I haven't seen in years. Ruben sent me a text by the name of Ike. Uh, Caballero and and he's in the hospital. Uh, he he he's on the on the respirator, right? So we have to believe God is going to be the anointing that breaks the strongholds. It's the anointing, Hallelujah, Amen. So with that in mind, I believe if the anointing is increasing, then we have to be really awakened to a new door opening, a new door opening for His glory. So if there is an increasing of the anointing, that means there's going to be a new door opening. A new door that's going to open. Hallelujah. Amen. I love new doors that open. And also know that doors will close too, right? And so we have to realize door, a door is going to open for the glory of God if we keep believing what the word of the Lord says. Amen. A new door of what? Manifested power. A new door of visitations of the glory of God. A new, new, power, new, new door opening of a demonstration of the Holy Spirit like never before. Unlike this nation has never seen before. We need that. Hallelujah. Amen. If you press in for what the Lord says, it shall come to pass. See, whenever the Lord releases a word, we have to speak it. We have to de declare it. We have to respond to it. You know, we just can't expect it to happen without us responding. That's why we had to speak it, say it, declare it. The prophet speaks and declares the word of the Lord, and we agree, and we declare, hallelujah, amen. amen. So we have to press in. Go with me to the book of Luke now. I want to press in in these days even more. Hallelujah. And yes, it's going to take the anointing to give you the strength, the unction. Sometimes you, when, you, when you see everything around you, you know, you know, I watch the news in some sense to, to pray, but I have to turn it off because it's just discouraging in a sense. It's just crazy. 
It, it is just a, a wild process that's taking place right now. Silliness is taking place. It's crazy, right? Well, you know, it's demonic. All this is demonic. And so uh, what makes us stay in faith is the anointing. It's believing God. Hallelujah. Amen. If we focus on all the, what the world's going through, man, we will be discouraged. We will literally put our head in the sand and not get out. I mean, there's people that don't want to get out. I was talking to my mom the other day, and she says, there's, there's people that do, don't get out. They have not gotten out since last year have not got on. She'll say, really, you haven't got on? She says, no, they do everything by baking. Everything, everything, food is delivered. And, and so I said, and I said Mom, that's, in, that's incredible. A whole year of, wow, my goodness, you know, it's some serious business. So, and these are Christians that, that, uh, that are not in church. Uh, and so we have to realize the plan of the enemy is being successful in things like this, it's being successful. Uh, the enemy knows how to keep people from uh, pressing in. And so we have to believe the anointing. Not, now look what it says in Luke, the fourth chapter. And I'm sure it happens to many places. Um, we have to keep pressing through as believers. Hallelujah. Amen. And don't be in fear. The Bible says in verse 18, the spirit of the Lord. Jesus said this is written read. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me. Jesus said, I was anointed by the Spirit of the Lord. What's he saying? God anointed me. He has anointed me. Well, for what? To preach. He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He's anointed me. To, he sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recover his sight to the blind, and set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year. That word acceptable year is really to encourage and speak about the jubilee that's coming. So, folks, we have to be anointed to be able to encourage others. Jubilee's here, hallelujah, amen, come on. Jubilee is here, hallelujah, amen. He's anointed us to preach the gospel. He's anointed us, say with me, he's anointed me. He's anointed me to set the captives free. He's anointed me to heal the brokenhearted. He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the good of the good news to the poor. Hallelujah. Amen. And so the enemy tries to shut us down. Notice what it says in, in the New Living Translation, Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released. Say with me, captives be released. Yeah that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, that's a lot of work, Pastor. That's a lot of work in these days. No, it takes the anointing. Come on, church. Well, Pastor, it's just hard to get my uncle to know Jesus. It's hard to get my sister and brother to know Jesus. Well, it takes the anointing. The anointing. It's going to take the anointing. Hallelujah. Amen. And see, the anointing increases, number one, when you believe what the Lord says and stay with it. Stay in faith, stay in the word, confess the word of God, worship the Lord, praise God, overcome the obstacles, uh, bind the flesh, bind the thoughts, the fears. It's constant. It's a war. It's a warfare. People say, well, we don't need to fight anymore because Jesus did it all. We got to understand something. Jesus disarmed the devil. The devil has no, no weapons, but he uses intimidation, he uses fear tactics, he uses lies, he uses deception. So we have to take authority over those spirits of deception, those spirits of lying, those spirits of, of you know, that, that come to try to keep one from the word of God. Amen. Notice as we can put our head in the sand and say, well, Jesus did it all. He did it all on the cross, but it's up to you to fulfill what he's already done, what he's already accomplished. It's like a law, it's like a law enforcer. Uh, there's a law already engraved upon the Constitution or upon the city's laws, legislation. The police officer's job is to enact them, to enforce them. You know, you can say, well, we don't need no more police officers because we got the law. <laughs> you know what's happening, right? No, law, no police officers, you're going to have all kinds of uh, people breaking the law. So it takes enforcement. It takes enforcement. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you slow down when you pass a children's school zone? Why do you slow down? Because it's the law. Hallelujah. Amen. Now notice what it says in Isaiah. Isaiah, the 10th chapter. So we have to enforce it, but it's going to take the anointing of God on us to overcome these things. 
Folks, no anointing, no power, no ability of God to come on you. Hallelujah. Amen. In Isaiah, the 10th chapter, verses 27, we read this before, but let's read it again. The Bible says this, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken from off thy shoulders and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed altogether because of the anointing. Hallelujah. Amen. The Amplified says, the yoke shall be destroyed because of the fatness which prevents it from going, from going around your neck. Hallelujah. Amen. So in other words, more anointing makes you get thick. More anointing puts fatness on you and it breaks yokes. Hallelujah. Amen. See, yokes come in different fashion. Yokes come in different ty types. Yokes come to keep you bound, to keep you going in others' direction than the Lord. But I'll tell you what, you got to break the yokes. you got to break that yoke by the anointing. And you've got to say it, I break that yoke. Uh, I release the anointing over that situation. I, the Father, for your word says the anointing breaks, diminish, destroys, and completely destroys the yokes. Hallelujah. Amen. Now go with me to John, the third chapter. I'm excited for the anointing because the anointing is increasing in every service. The anointing is increasing in our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. John, the, th the third chapter, verses 30. Now notice this. This is where you have to understand what the Bible is saying, right? Not what you think. He must increase, but I must decrease. Do you see that? The NLT says he must become greater and greater, and I must become less and less. Some people say, wait, wait, wait Pastor. Don't we, should we be greater, great, great, greater is he that is in me? <laughs> you have to realize something. He's great, but he has to become greater in you. That means you have to become less and less and less of you. You've got to get rid of yourself. You've got to get rid of you, 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 and put him, him, him on. Come on, church. Him, him, him on. Every time, every time. It's amazing. Pastor Christine said that over last week there was a lot of car accidents and and I happened to see a car accident right in front of me, and I got to see it all. I, I just pulled over, and I started interceding. And, and you know, I, I, I realized something. You know, you just about have to have that anointing all the time. Amen. Everywhere you go, the anointing of God, every morning. Get up and dispatch your angels around your family, your loved ones. I, I do that for all our family, all the church. We have to constantly do those things. Because the anointing has to increase. So in other words, if you look at it this way, uh, the Bible says the anointing, uh, uh, he must become greater and greater. And I must be less and less. Get rid of your... If you're having a hard time becoming less and less, go fast. Fast for a couple of days. Fast and you'll find out how your flesh will yield to the presence of God. Amen. So in other words, the anointing separates you from yourself. Amen. You must decrease so that he can increase in you. Uh, you know, there's times when Pastor Christine and I want to watch a good movie. Oh, I tell you what, there's movies that are terrible out there. Oh, gosh, we, just, we, we, get, we get so exhausted going through all types of movies trying to figure them out. So finally, I said, honey, just get on YouTube, find some old black and white movies. I guarantee you, you you're going to find them clean. And we found some black and white movies. And, and Nice entertainment movies, nice movies, movies that make you think, hallelujah, amen. And, and I realized something, uh, the more that I spend time watching mess, the more I become a mess. And the more that I become a mess, the more the anointing decreases. But the moment I take authority over that mess and try, move away from that mess and ask God to help me and spend more time praying the Holy Ghost, that anointing increases so that mess doesn't bother you, right? Hallelujah. But I tell you, people, I have Christians tell me, you ought to watch. I had a preacher, and I'm not talk, down talking to pastors and preachers. Believe me, there are some preachers or ministries, ministers that, you know, someone told me, you need to watch this movie. You'll love it. I said, you sure it's a clean movie? Said, oh, yeah. Pastor Christine and I turned it off, and we had to turn it off. I said, my goodness. They must have, I believe the best. <laughs> they must have been using this, some kind of blooper, some kind of thing that was blooping because I couldn't watch it. We had to turn it off, right? And so, but anyway, I believe the best. Say with me, amen. <laughs> Notice what it says. <laughs> look, look at Matthew the 8th chapter, or Mark. Look at Mark, hallelujah, amen. And so we have to really work on those things, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah. Mark the 8th chapter. Verses 34, um, look what it says here. 
The Bible says in verse 34, uh, let me read to you from the Amplified Classic. Amen. Jesus called to him the throng with his disciples and said unto them, If any man or if anyone attends to come after me, let him deny himself. You know what that means? Forget, ignore, disown, and lose sight of himself. Oh, wow. Wow. Ignore, disown, lose sight of himself and his own interest. Boy, I tell you what, that right there is a strong lesson for us. I tell you what, people that are, are big on themselves won't like my preaching. Let them deny himself, forget, d ignore, disown, and lose sight of himself and his own interest and take up his cross. Notice this, take up his cross. And joining me as a disciple and siding with my party, follow me, continue, cleaving steadfastly to me. Now notice this, cleaving steadfastly to me. This is the, the purpose of Christianity, is cleaving to Jesus more in these days. Find ways to cleave, cleave more to him, either by worship, by prayer, by reading scripture, by devotions, by watching good field movies that have Jesus and the anointing on it. We have to find ways to cleave ourselves. But we got to get rid of ourself, 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 ourself. Uh, sometimes uh, we, we don't ignore ourselves. Uh, we, we, we don't disown ourselves. You know, the selfie issue, Pastor Christine prayed about it today. You know, that is really... Uh, vain, selfie attitude. People take pictures of their meals and post them. People take pictures of themselves. I'm talking about, lit now ho hold on, hold on just a minute. We, I take pictures of us and our family and all that because I want my family to see pictures. But I see people take pictures of themselves. <laughs> of themselves, every, and, and then they look, you know, you know what I'm talking about? You can tell they're taking selfies because they're taking a picture of a mirror and you can see the camera of themselves, right? <laughs> And I really, get a, I really get a laugh when I see people take pictures of their meals. Their meals, every, every meal. Now, who wants to see some meals? Bring me the meal. Bring me the meal. Hallelujah. Amen. Bring me a gift card with that meal. Hallelujah. Come on, church. And nobody wants to see uh, all the time you, 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 you. Show me some pictures of babies and pets and cars. And, not yourself. Come on, church. Oh, I'm, I'm going to get people going to say stuff. Hallelujah, man. And so it's amazing, right? So we got to disown ourselves. We've got to lose sight of ourselves and our own interests and take up his cross. Take up your cross, ladies and gentlemen. Take up the cross of Jesus. Amen. There's purpose for the cross so that we're able to distinguish who we are apart from the world. People need to see us different. I'm not talking about your clothes. I'm, I'm not talking about your haircut. I'm not talking about your makeup or, or how you shave, whatever. Go with me to Hebrews, the third chapter. Hebrews, the third chapter. Notice what it says here in verses 1. Hallelujah. Amen. Hebrews 3, 1. Hebrews. I made some, I made some coffee today. I brewed. Hebrews. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. Look at that word, partakers. You know what that word means? That we're part, part of the distribution of what God has. We're partakers of the heavenly calling. In other words, we're, we're called to, to partake. Consider the apostle, the high priest of our confession or profession, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. So in other words, the, 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 end, the end, notice what it says here. Go with me to verse 14 now. For we are made partakers of Christ. You're made partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfastly unto the end. Hold on, be confident unto the end. What end? Until the day that you go home to be with the Lord. Hold on to it. Hold on to it. Be steadfast. Be steadfast. I don't care what the world says. I don't care what the world is doing. I don't care what family's doing. You stay steadfast in the Word of God. And I'll tell you something, folks. A lot of times you lose interest with family members if you're steady on the Word of God. Somehow, somehow, if you're steady in the Word of God and you're, and you're wanting to please God and you just want to make heaven before the evil days come, people will say that you're strange. People say you're old-fashioned, legalistic, uh, 
you know, uh, be, be, be relaxed more. No, no, no. Be steadfast. Hallelujah. Listen to what it says in the NLT. It says, for we are faithful to the end. I'm faithful to the end. I'm faithful to God to the end. Trusting God just as firmly as when we first believed. Just like when you first got saved, take it all the way to the end. Be faithful all the way in. Uh, uh, when we first believed, we will share in all that belongs to Christ. I want you to get this picture, folks. Get this picture. The day that you got saved, you became faithful. Stay faithful unto the Lord all the way to the end. All the way to the end. Be faithful. Be faithful. Amen. Well, how, how can you be faithful to the end? By the anointing. The anointing of God. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying every morning. Getting up and saying, Father, I praise you and I worship you. You know, there's times where I just want to get up and just stay, or I want to just stay in bed all day. Put my head under the pillow and just, just, just lay there forever. You see what I'm saying? But I have to rise up and say, Father, I thank you for the anointing that I draw from this morning. I thank you for the anointing. It's you, Father. I love you, Father. Let me please you today, Father. Give me divine appointments today. Let me do your work today. Hallelujah. Amen. So we have to do that. Now go with me to 1 John. Amen. Say with me, hallelujah. hallelujah. The anointing is increasing in every service. Every service. Hallelujah. Go with me to 1 John. 1 John, the second chapter, verses 22. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Are you with me, church? 1 John 2, 22. Hallelujah. Notice what it says here. This is, this is, this is, uh, um, well, let's look at verses 27. Excuse me, verses 27. But the anointing. But the anointing. We're talking about the anointing. The ability that comes on you from God. But the anointing which you have received of him, meaning of God, abideth in you. And you need not that any man teach you, but as, as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is true and is no lie, even as it is taught, even as it has taught you, you shall be able to abide in it. You know, notice this. Let's, let's, let's understand something. I had a young man say, Pastor, see, this tells me I don't need a pastor in my life and I don't need a church because this is the anointing that teaches me. And I said, you dummy. That's not what it means. It means you need the anointing to teach you how to live. You need the anointing to teach you in every circumstance. You need the anointing to, to bring into remembrance things. You need the anointing of God in all your walk and all your Christian and walk. It takes the anointing to, to bring to remembrance what you've been taught in the church. It takes the anointing. Come on, church. You know, uh, uh, today, w w today we took our grandbabies to Waterburg. We had a Waterburg Wednesday. Amen. Hey, I never thought about it. Waterburg Wednesday. I'm a Waterburger Wednesday, amen. And so they love it. They, they, they tell me, Grandpa, I thank you for, for taking us to Waterburger. Oh, I love that. I love that. But anyway, uh, I had the radio off because, you know, I wanted to hear them talking. And all of a sudden, my little grandbaby, Claire, said this. She said, Grandpa, can you turn the radio on? So I turned it on. Would you, would you believe that they were singing those songs? Three songs back to back. They were singing them back to back, every song. And I said, oh my goodness, you guys know these songs? Grandpa, we hear these songs on the way to church every, every Sunday. And I said, isn't that amazing? They're getting that word in them. In them, and they're so, they're, 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 their capability to receive and to, to hear these words and to remember these words. I can't even remember half these songs. And they remember these songs. Hallelujah. Amen. What is it? It's the anointing in them. The anointing to bring up these songs and to worship God. They made my day going to Waterburger on Wednesday. <laughs> Amen. So it's the anointing. The anointing, the anointing. Say with me, it's the anointing. It's the anointing. Now, folks, I'm going to show you something. Go with me to Acts. Not only does the anointing bring you things to your remembrance and gives you the ability to do things at ease and to be able to strengthen yourself, to overcome yourself, but it's for a purpose. Look what it says in Acts 1.8. But you shall receive power. That's the Holy Ghost. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That's the anointing. And you shall be witnesses. I'm going to stop here. You shall be witnesses. What's a witness? Someone that's seen, seen you. Someone that recognizes something about you. Uh, the other day uh, we, were, we were, Pastor Christine mentioned about a couple that was talking about Jesus or Christian lingo. And all of a sudden we got up to leave the restaurant. <laughs> Restaurant and they all just looked. And Pastor C said, They sense the anointing. That's what it was. I say, Amen. It's the anointing. I like that. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's the anointing. The anointing is what gets people's attention. You want people's attention? Not for vain purposes, so that you can pray for them, so they can recognize there's something different about that girl, something different about that man. It's the anointing. We need this. 
Look at John the 6th chapter, quickly. Hallelujah, John the 6th chapter. See, we need the anointing. Hallelujah, the anointing brings favor. Uh, uh, the anointing does things. John the 6th chapter, I want to show you something here. In John the 6th chapter, verses 1, after these things, after John 6, 1, after these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great multitude followed him. Why did they follow him? The anointing. Because they saw miracles. Why was miracles happen? Because the anointing. Which he did on them that were diseased. Amen. So the anointing did something. And Jesus went up into the mountain. And there he sat with the disciples in the Passover of the feast. The Jews was nigh. And when Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him. He said unto Philip, whence shall we buy bread for all these that they may? Oh man, they're following him because of the anointing. Think about that. Hundreds and hundreds, thousands of people came to Jesus because of the anointing he had. And the anointing fed everybody. I want you to think about it. The anointing can do those things in your life. I remember one time years ago, we were, we were excited. We had a steak. Uh, we, had a, 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 we had some friends over and we were having some steak. And all of a sudden, those friends called other friends. And, you know, when we, Pastor Christine and I were young, before we had our children, uh, we had a lot of young couples coming to our house. We just had a great time. You know, I was a musician, and Pastor Christine was gorgeous, man. I tell you, she's still gorgeous. And, and, and so we just had a lot of friends, a lot of wonderful people. I mean, you know, Christian people, no drinking, just Christian people coming over. And they asked, hey, hey, Bobby, can we invite some? Yeah, can we? Yeah, invite them, invite them. We'll figure something out. We'll look for some bologna or something. And so Pastor, I'm outside, Pastor Christine in the kitchen, and I said, honey, let's come in agreement for multiplication. We were going to Lakewood, and we believed faith, and and we, we knew how to pray faith. And Father, so we prayed, Father, multiply this meal so that everybody will get a steak in this house and some beans and rice and tortillas and, and Dr. Pepper. And oh gosh, we just believe in Jesus' name. I tell you what, people were coming and I had a little cooler next to my barbecue pit and I'm flipping those steaks in there and I'm putting them in there and I'm just drinking my Dr. Pepper, talking to friends and Pastor Christine's inside and making the beans and rice and, and they're making avocado dip and, and, and all of a sudden people are coming, the whole driveways full of people and, 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 and you know we're just having a great time and, and we're just starting to eat and all of a sudden Pastor Christine said uh, who, who bought the steak? And I said you know what? I opened that lid I said oh my God praise God it's multiplied all the way to the top. The beans, the beans never ran out. The rice never ran out and we had steak for the next day for the next two days in our house. What brought that to happen? The anointing of God. The anointing of God. Hallelujah. Amen. You see what the anointing does? So the anointing is what gets people's attention. I tell you what, it taught me something. Hallelujah. Amen. So we have to, and the anointing is a demonstrator. Do you see that? Go with me to John, the 12th chapter. The anointing is a demonstrator. Notice what it says in, in John, the 12th chapter. And we don't have, we're not going to read it all, but I'm just going to jump to some certain scriptures. John 1, notice what it says. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. And there made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Now notice what it says in, verse, in verses 3. Then took Mary a pound of ointment worth, worth $10,000 for today of spikenard very costly and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair and the house was filled with the anointing with the odor of the anointing mint of the anointed what's happening here look at look go with me to verse 9 now all the way to verse 9 much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there and they came not for Jesus sake but that they might see Lazarus also whom he had raised from the dead come on church verse 11 because that by reason of him many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus because of what they saw in Lazarus now I want you to look at something Lazarus was there eating with Jesus the anointing was present on Jesus' body because now this woman put spikenard on his feet and the anointing filled the air. I want you to think about this. The anointing filled the air. People were coming because of, of Lazarus, but really they're coming because the anointing was on Jesus. The anointing was on. They didn't come to see Jesus. They came to see the miracle of Jesus. So it was the anointing that they came. The anointing got people's attention. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to be so filled with the anointing that people get attention. They get, they get to know and say, whoa, look at you. 
Look at the power of God on you, hallelujah, amen. I want the anointing so thick that they smell you in the room, hallelujah, amen. They smell your presence, hallelujah, amen. You walk by and they're just feeling the presence of God. And you touch them and you pray for them. They say, "Woo, boy, I feel something, hallelujah, amen. And, and they'll say, I want to go where you're going. What church are you going to, hallelujah, amen. So it's the anointing, praise God, amen. Go with me to Romans now. We're looking at a lot of scripture here. We can't go wrong with scripture. Rome, Romans, the first chapter. Thank God for the anointing. Thank God for the anointing has begun in us. Say with me, it's begun in me. Today, tonight, tonight, hallelujah. Romans, the first chapter, verses 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Now listen to this, in, or pay close attention to this. For I, am not, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. The gospel is, remember, the good news. I am not ashamed of the good news of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it, to the Jews first and also to the Greek. For therein, therein where? The gospel is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Say it, say it with me. The just shall live by faith. Now notice this. It's the anointing that keeps you living by faith. It's the anointing that keeps you speaking of the good news. Tonight you're hearing the good news of Jesus. So we have to expect the anointing right now. Say with me, I receive the anointing. I receive the anointing because we're hearing the good news of Jesus. I receive the anointing. Amen. Notice this. The Bible says it is the power unto salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. And so in other words, we, when we preach Jesus or Christ, it tells others that we're saved. It tells others that he saves tells others that he heals, it tells others that Jesus sets people free. Amen. Amen. Listen, folks, there's a lot of people that need to be free. Oh, there's a lot of unhappy people in this world. Oh, they, you may not realize it, but there's a lot of unhappy people. You may not realize it just because you see them smiling at work, but really they're, maybe they're unhappy in some area. Something's happening. But we need the anointing so that we can encourage them and tell them about oh, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So the, when we preach Christ, therein is the power of Jesus. Amen. Let's go to, we're not far from Mark. Go with me to Mark. Well, I'll tell you what, go to Luke. Luke's on the way there. On the way to Mark. Luke, the fifth chapter, verses one. Are you there? Jesus, and it says, it came to pass that as the people pressed upon to hear the word of God. Luke says, pressed upon him to hear the word of God. He stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and they were washing their nets. Notice this. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people the word of God out of the ship. Now notice what's happening. The word of God is being taught from a ship. Jesus, the anointed one. Notice what the anointing did. The Bible says, Jesus said in verse 4, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answered, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, at thy anointing, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed, enclosed a great multitude of fish and their nets break. Now notice this. The fish that they caught some speculate, according to many doctors of the, of the Bible, say it was almost three months of fish that they gathered. Three months. So I want you to think about it. The anointing brought salary to them. I want you to think about it. The anointing brings increase to your walk. That's why we need to increase on the anointing. Increase to your walk. You have favor. Folks, listen. The other day, I went to go fill up my truck at a gas station where I usually fill it up. And I put my, 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 my credit card in there, and, and I noticed that uh, it didn't ask for my zip code. And it, it said, pump gas. So I pulled out the credit card, put it in there, and I started pumping gas. And it stopped at $15. I said, that's funny. Why did it stop? Well, I printed the, print, I printed the thing, and I printed it out. And then I put my credit card in there again, and this time it asked me, and, and I put my code in there, and I filled it up. And I thought, I said, that's funny. I wonder what one way to do. Well, the receipt came out. It said, uh, it said uh, to the effect of this, in other words, it let me know that it, it, the, somebody paid for it inside. It said, paid, oh, I don't know the wording, but I can't remember. Anyway, it, it let me know that it paid on inside. Then the person bought 
Mentos, bought a Coke, and, and then bought some beef jerky. And I said, I hope that was in charge of my credit card. So I, you know, I was looking at it and finally looked at it again. Well, what happened was this. Someone paid for mementos, Coke, and then beef jerky, and then paid for their gas, but came out and forgot to put gas, drove off. And so I'm thinking, okay, so Lord, what do I do? Do I go in there and give them the $15, or what do I do? And the Lord put in my heart, very simple, he says, the wealth of the world is laid up for you. And I said, well, okay, I understand that, Lord, okay. So I went home and I called Christine. I said, honey, um, this is what happened. But I feel the Lord is saying this. And she says, you know what? She probably said, you know what? Probably what happened was that person or whoever that was probably needed to sow that $15. Needed to sow it. And I said, you know what? You're right. So notice this. I got $15 of gas, $15 of gas. Come on, church, hallelujah, amen. And so, you know, you have to realize it, and only by the anointing. So I thought, the anointing of God, the anointing of God. Yeah, I would have went in there and paid $15, but what if that clerk would have put the $50 in her pocket? What if that person would have never came back for those $15, amen? But the thing about it, the Lord spoke to me, and I notice this. Now, look at the anointing. The anointing drew in the finances, and that's what you and I need to have favor in that area. Come on, church. Now, look at Mark now. Go with me to Mark. Uh, we're, we're going to Mark, and look what it says in the second chapter, Mark 2. Come on, church. Let the anointing, let the anointing work. Come on, church. Let the anointing work. Hallelujah. Amen. Mark 2, uh, verses 2. <laughs> Amen. Notice what it says. And straightway, Mark 2, 2. And straightway many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them. Not, no, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. Now let's just stop here. It was just jam-packed with people. Why? Because the anointing was present. Tell me the anointing is present here. The anointing is increasing in every service. Now notice this. I want to say something now. The devil doesn't like that. He's going to do everything he can to hinder our confession, to hinder what we're saying, hinder that even, you know, uh, you know tonight, people are not here. Some people are not here. They should have been here for other reasons, right? We know some are taking their healing by faith, and we know some that, that are not here because of other things. But what I'm trying to say is this. We can't get discouraged simply because the enemy is attacking us in the areas of, of attendance. Amen. And it's easy for us to get discouraged. It's easy for us to, like Pastor George one time was saying, he was worshiping the Lord in front row, and he turned around and says, oh my God, where is everybody at? He said he felt like the air of a balloon just pierced him, and he just pulled all the air out. He said, it's just preaching to me and my wife and the sound man, Right? Well, loaded folks, that he said, but he realized something. He says, no, I'm encouraged because the anointing draws in the word. The anointing brings in the crowds. So I want you to believe this with me. The anointing is going to draw in the crowds. The anointing is going to draw in the crowds. That's so much, there's no room for them to sit. The anointing is going to draw in the crowds on Wednesday and on Sunday. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm believing this. Now, let's look at it again. Come on. God doesn't lie. When he said the anointing is increasing in every service, I feel the anointing now. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Notice what it says. The Bible says, where were we? Uh, uh, in verses 2, chapter 2. And straightway many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. Oh, God, come on, church, say with me, amen. amen. That's the owner of Jesus. So the same Jesus is present here today. The word of God is present here today, and the anointing is present here today. So we're now expecting for the house to be full of Jesus' people coming because we believe in the word. So we're expecting the house to be full. Come on, stand up with me. We're expecting this house to be full, that as the door, as so much that the doors cannot close, and that place was packed. Hallelujah. The place was packed because the anointing, the anointing brings healing, the anointing brings favor, the anointing brings breakthrough through the anointing increases come on church the anointing the anointing the anointing come on church hallelujah the anointing say with me amen the anointing hallelujah amen 
The anointing is the ability to do something with ease and the ability to achieve something under the power of God. Amen. And so we have the anointing of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, Father, we thank you. Say with me. Something great is about to happen to us this day, this year, and it's starting today because of the anointing. And notice, remember, a new door is opening because of the anointing. A new door of glory is opening. It's increasing in us, Lord. Father, we thank you. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the anointing that's increasing, Lord Jesus. It's increasing in every service. It's increasing in every person here today, every person watching. I want to encourage everyone that's watching, draw from that anointing. Get, get into that press through, press through, press through into the house of God. Father, we thank you for the anointing that's present. We thank you for the ability that's on us to do the work of God. We thank you that Jesus was anointed of God to, do, to preach the gospel to the poor, to bring deliverance, to set the captives free. Hallelujah. Thank you for the anointing, Father. In the name of Jesus, thank you for the anointing. Hallelujah. Now, Father, we thank you that the anointing is here, present to heal everyone here and everyone watching. So we speak healing, healing to everyone that's watching tonight. Everyone that's watching, we speak, we speak a, a increase of a continued healing to the Lawaski family. We pray a healing to, to Caballero and his family. We pray a healing, healing. Hallelujah. We have a friend in, in Texas by the name of Julie Hernandez and Joe Hernandez. We speak healing to them in the name of Jesus. We speak healing to them. We speak healing. Oh, rabba, 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 We speak healing, Father. Oh, we speak healing in Jesus' name. We speak healing. Hallelujah. Healing, healing, healing. Oh, thank you for the anointing that's increasing in us. Thank you for the anointing that's increasing in every one of us. Thank you, Father. Oh, robo shabranda kata. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I give you praise, Jesus. I give you praise. Lord, your word says the anointing is increasing in every service. We believe it. We make a declaration. We make a decree <coughs> that the anointing is increasing in every service. And we thank you for the anointing that's increasing. Father, your word says, it's not by might, nor by power, but by your spirit. Father, it's by your spirit, Lord Jesus, that produces this anointing. So, Father, every service, every service, we give you praise. Thank you for the anointing, Father. Thank you for the anointing, Lord Jesus. The ability to do something with ease and the ability to achieve something under the power of God. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Give him a shout. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.